Hi, Jimmy Davis here from the Nursing Show at NTI 2016 in New Orleans. We're talking about the Clinical Scene Investigator Academy again and the CSI Academy program which develops nurse leaders and empowers nurses to be game changers in their facilities. And I have Laura Mills here. So Laura, um, we're going to talk a little bit about your CSI Academy program here in just a sec. But I always like to start off asking the nurses that come on the show to tell us a little bit about their background and why they wanted to become a nurse. Okay. Um, well, again, I'm Laura Mills and I've been at Swedish Hospital. Um, First Hill Campus in Seattle, Washington for 25 years. Um, it is the only place I've worked and I absolutely love Swedish. And I have always wanted to be a nurse. It's all I can remember. And so I feel very honored to be in a profession that um, I feel it's a calling for me. And there wasn't a significant event in my life that you know brought me to nursing. I just always wanted to be a nurse. And so I feel like I'm like that 0.001% that knew at a very young age pursued my dream and still after 25 years, I love doing my job. So. That's awesome. So you're a graduate of the Clinical Scene Investigator Academy from AACN. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about your participation in that program. Um, what kind of got you started in it? Well, we were selected by our uh, CNS and the critical care unit and a group of four of us were selected and um, were part of this journey. It was a 16 month journey and I had been working on CADIs for probably about two to three years prior to this, and um, we just brought this group together and decided that was what our project was going to be. So we thought it was a great opportunity for us professionally, and we really didn't know what we were getting into, to be perfectly honest, and, um, but we were really happy with the journey that we had and the um, results. So what, what did you find out when you started looking at, at these infections, you know, these catheter-associated UTIs that were in your, that were in your facility? Um, what, what did you find out? Were you surprised by some of the things you discovered as you started digging into it? I was surprised. I think one thing that I think has been maybe a mistake in the past from hospitals is nurses really, I never had any idea prior to this experience or prior to starting to um, work as the infection MQL on our unit, um, what our CAUTI rate was and um, or even like CLABSIs and BAPs mm -hmm. and things like that. The, the frontline nurse didn't have that information and I think that's actually crucial for them because nurses want to do what, the right thing um, but it's hard to know if you're doing something wrong if nobody ever speaks to you right. about that. And so I was surprised, I guess, at our infection, or actually I didn't really know, is this an abnormal rate? Is right. this high? Are we really good or what's going on? But it's never good to have infections. So we knew we had some work to do. You know, that's an interesting thing you say when you said you didn't know. I think that's one of the most common things I discover doing these types of interviews is that we really don't, we, I mean, the hospital doesn't publicize this kind of mm -hmm. information, but I think as caregivers at the bedside, it's imperative that we understand where our numbers are so that we can look at where we can improve and understand when the numbers get better that they did get better. Right. I agree with you 100%. You don't know what to fix if you don't know there's a problem, right? So it's, it's I was honored to work as an infection NQL and be asked by my managers to do that role. Um, but it's, you know, again, I was starting at ground zero and I learned a lot. I learned. It was really good for me because there was a lot of networking throughout the hospital and making connections and working with our data mm -hmm. people and quality improvement and um, epidemiology. So it's, it's been a great journey. So what did you find out? What did your team of four find out and implement in your facility? And what were some of the outcomes for the patients the changes like? So what we found out is we, despite our previous efforts, um, or my efforts, I guess, as the infection NQL, we are still above the national standard. And so we started out by taking a survey of the nurses and asking them what they thought the barrier was to catheter removal, um, surveying what their technique was for how they took care of um, patients' catheter, indwelling catheter. And, um, you know, we just, we kind of went from there. And we decided that, like I said, we'd been working on this and people kind of had what we said, caughty fatigue. And, but we really felt it was an important mission and that we had made, um, steady gain, but not quite the results we wanted. So, you know, we just realized, well, we have to do a lot more education. Nurses are um, very intelligent. It's a great profession. And they're not going to just do something because you tell them to. You know, they want to know the why behind yeah. it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we did a lot of um, research and article literature review. Mm -hmm. And um, that allowed us to kind of build a foundation for how we were going to educate our staff and help them come along on this journey.
So how did it affect things as you started this process? Uh, what, what kind of change did you see in outcomes for patients? Well, we had we are very happy with our outcomes. Um, over the course of our nine months, well, the whole, the whole journey of a, uh, CSI was 16 months. and But during our actual Im implementation from the beginning to the end, we had a 92% reduction in our CAUTI rates, so which was great. Um, you know, we did see a drop in our utilization of indwelling catheters, but I think it was really the importance of showing nurses that, you know, you can have them, but, um, you know, we need to remove them as early as we possibly can. We can't just leave them in. And then if you're gonna, if a patient's gonna have an indwelling catheter, how do we best care for that? Mm -hmm. Because it is a, considered an, an invasive line. And how do we prevent our patients from um, getting an infection? You know, nobody wants to cause harm. That's an amazing rate of, of change though, and, and significant for a lot of patients not getting these infections. And it is, and you know, one of the things we kind of started with is asking nurses if you'd ever had a urinary tract infection and how did that feel? And, um, you know, just so that they could kind of relate to that experience. And then just also talking to them about long-term consequences that predisposes patients to future, mm -hmm. you know, urinary tract infections. So we were proud of our nurses and our staff and our intensivists for all coming on board. So as you look back at what you did with the CSI Academy, what's your takeaway? What, what did you, what do you take with you now every day that you learned in that process? I think um, our biggest takeaway is that nurses have the power to create change and working together as a group is huge. It's very hard to do something on your own, even though you might have the ideas and you're passionate about it, it's hard to sustain that. So working together as a group um, was significant in our change. And the, these are all frontline nurses who particip participated in the CSI. And I think showing our colleagues that we can do this as a group, that we have the ability to make change and provide better patient care and outcomes for our patients um, was very inspiring. Well, Laura, it's exciting to hear about what you guys are doing there at Swedish and, and keep it up. That's great. Thank you very much. I want to thank all of you as well for uh, checking out this segment here at NTI 2016. Uh, I'm Jamie Davis from The Nursing Show. Remember, you can find all the segments that we shot here, all these interviews, these fantastic stories, over at nursingshow.com.